Thank you, Rachel, for that beautiful music welcoming us to worship on this Lord's Day, our first Sunday of Advent. Glad you could join us on this Thanksgiving weekend. Fling wide the door, open the gate. That's our opening hymn. Let's rise as we're able to join in the singing. Okay, follow my lead. I'm a child of God. I am loved. Then elbow your neighbor, and I'm not alone. Please be seated. Please don't elbow too hard, though. That's uh, Welcome, special welcome to our guests and visitors. Glad you could join us, and also those streaming online today and dialing into our worship. As part of our Advent traditions, we light the Advent candle one week at a time, one, two, three, four. And today the Bernard family is gonna help us with the candle lighting and the opening litany. Thank you. At every beginning, there is a yearning for the one who is coming, O Emmanuel. Prepare us for your coming. We gather together to get ready for what? Only heaven knows, O Emmanuel. Prepare us for your coming. We wait for the day when God will create a prevailing peace on the earth and natural born enemies turn into newborn friends, 
O Emmanuel. We get ready for God to come close by, laying our lives open to Jesus, asking him to sort through all our mixed motives. O Emmanuel. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles, whose flame brings warmth to winter and fill this place with the glow of hope. And I will sing two verses from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Join with me in the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, kids. Are there any kids here that would like to come up? Come on down. Good to see all you kids here today. We've set up the uh, manger scene. We set that up every year, of course, as we get ready for Christmas. Uh, can you kids just wait here for a minute? Can you wait here two minutes? Three? Four? Five? Wow, you could wait all day? Really? <laughs> They're going to wait here all day, Mom. No, that'd be a long day, but I want to talk about waiting a little bit. We just lit one candle there. Of course, we got three to go, so that's four weeks of Advent, and then comes Christmas. Do you guys ever get anxious waiting for Christmas? I do, too. It's one of my more, most special days to celebrate Christmas. Now, talk about waiting. How long do you think Mother Mary had to wait to give birth to her baby? How long do you think she carried Jesus in her stomach? Ten weeks. Very good guess. That's right. At least ten weeks. And then about 30 more, I think, something like that. So she had to wait. How about those three wise guys? How long do you think they had to wait to come and see the newborn king? They're called the three kings or three wise men. They had to wait all their lives. That's a long time, isn't it? And then, of course, we have Joseph of the Jewish tradition. How many years do you think the Jewish people had to wait for the Messiah? Hundreds of years they waited. And some are still waiting for the Messiah. And Jesus said he's coming back again, and we wait for that great and glorious. So waiting's part of life, isn't it? It's not always easy. Sometimes it's hard. 
But the Bible says, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. So they'll run and not be weary and walk and not faint. So in other words, good things come to those who wait on the Lord. Remember that. Let's pray. Lord, thank you as you help us to wait for you, to wait for others, to wait for those things you have planned for these children and all of us. Give us patience, give us endurance, and most of all, give us faith and love in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said, Bless you as you head off to Sunday school. Watch your step. Thanks to Bonnie Hallberg for reading our lessons today. The first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 2. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall, shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords with plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. We'll read responsively Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now your feet are standing with your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with, with itself. Go up, the tribes of the Lord the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are thrones of judgment and thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and companions, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do, do you good. The second reading is from Romans 13. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is near, nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for flesh to gratify its desires. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, you, Lord. Matthew 24. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And then they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in a field, one will be taken and one will be left. 
Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Here in the Gospel. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thank you, Bonnie. You've all played that game hide and seek, right? Ready or not, here I come. That's what Jesus is telling us, isn't he? Ready or not, here I come. So be ready. One way we be ready, of course, is to gather together as we are to pray and worship. Let us pray. Lord, help us to be ready for your coming, to know that you came 2,000 years ago to bring us salvation and that you'll come again to bring peace and love to all, that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are the Lord. Praise be to you now and forever. Amen. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many were glad to come to the house of the Lord today? All right, most of, aren't most of them. <laughs> Wasn't always the case for me, of course, as a teenager. It was kind of like, yeah, Dad, I'm not feeling up for it today. And Dad would say, well, you get dressed. When you get there, you'll feel better about it. <laughs> Which I did, because I met some wonderful people. And as parents and grandparents, we know we have an awesome call to help our children get to the house of the Lord so that they might know the gladness of giving God thanks and praise and offering themselves as a sacrifice to God, and of course being together with others to know we're not alone, but we're the body of Christ together, brothers and sisters. I was glad. And on this Thanksgiving weekend, I thought it'd be good just to think of at least 10 reasons for us to be glad as God's people. At least 10. I could probably do 100, but that would run us into the noon hour, and that's too long for Lutherans to worship. But number nine, after being in the house of the Lord, family and friends, which can drive us crazy sometimes, but can also be some of the greatest gladness and joy that we have, to have family, to have friendships. Think of Adam, the first guy God created. God wasn't enough for him. He needed to make a woman, so they had friendship, companionship. And we know that's why God creates us in the first place, to be in relationship with God himself, and then, of course, all of God's creation, creatures, family, friends. We know at the end of the road, that's what matters most, those moments and those days and those years that we've touched others' lives and that we've been touched by others. Number eight. So this might be a bit controversial, but... How about pets and animals? To be glad God has given us such creatures to have, to be loved by. And we know they can be driving us crazy too, as I'm finding out with a new puppy at our place. Yeah, this morning she had a shrew in her mouth and wouldn't give it up. I'm not gonna mess with that one. You can have the shrew. Uh, ever since I was lucky enough to marry Renee, we've had pets, dogs, cats, rabbits, turtles, birds. They're all beautiful creatures, except one called a gerbil. <laughs> was in a cage till one night somehow he ended up at my feet, nibbling my toes. Yeah, I went to get him, he ran off, got into the walls. For two, three days, Muffin was gone. I thought, oh, he's going to die in there and stink up the house. But sure enough, one morning, there he was. Somebody had left a little bag of those, those uh, cheese balls. He looked like Marlon Brando from The Godfather. <laughs> I got all the cheese balls. 
He went back in the cage right now. <laughs> Number seven, how about our country, our freedom? Isn't that something to be glad about, to rejoice in? Think of how many people are trying to get into this country, knowing the freedoms we have, the opportunities. Like Lee Greenwood sings that beautiful song, I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I'll not forget those men and women that died, that died to give that gift to me. What a gift we've been given. And pray for that peace and freedom for all the nations of the world. I don't know if you caught Isaiah's vision about turning swords into plowshares, spears into pruning hooks, so that there be no more war. And that's what we pray for earnestly every day. Number six, sunshine. We wouldn't be here without sunshine. Were you out yesterday? It was just beautiful. Almost felt like spring had come after a short winter, but we know that's not true. But even when it's 20 below, if the sun is out, it just helps us to know life will go on. It wouldn't even start it without the sunshine. Helps things grow, keeps us warm, gives us the light of the day to do what we have to do. And we know it can make us glad, because John Denver said it would. Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. Sunshine almost always makes me high. Yeah, so you don't need drugs. Just stand in the sunshine. Number five, how about food and shelter? How many had turkey for Thanksgiving? Yeah, so if you doze off, I'll understand because you've got that dopamine in your system. They say turkey makes you kind of sleepy, although it was a few days ago. But yeah, again, the gift of food of shelter. It's something to rejoice in, to be glad for, and of course to, to want to see everybody have the same. And that's why when we hear about the hungry, the poor, the homeless, we who have been blessed with much must give it away. Because that which is not given away is forever lost, as the Indian proverb states. Food and shelter and clothing. Number four, how about music and dance? Can you imagine Christmas without the Nutcracker Suite or without Silent Night or Joy to the World? Or can we imagine Christmas or Easter without Handel's Messiah? Can we imagine homecoming without the dance? <laughs> music and dance gives us joy, gladness. We could do it with others. We could do it alone. Martin Luther said, next to God, music deserves highest praise. And look what he did with it. It helped fuel a mid middle-aged reformation, which continues till today. The gift of music and dance. And as Garth Brooks sang, some things are left to chance. I could have missed the pain, but then I would have missed the dance. Number three, how about health and healing? If you were able to get up out of bed today and stretch your feet and your arms and breathe and get here to be glad to be in the house of the Lord, you've got some good health going. Because we, we know tomorrow that could change. In an instant, our health can take a turn. But thank God for those that can provide healing. God himself doctors, nurses, therapists that can help us to find that healing. And we know ultimately we're all going to lose out in this thing called life and die. But then the greatest healing comes, like Lazarus found out. Lazarus, come out. The resurrection from death to life. For eternity, the greatest healing of all. Number two, to rejoice about and to give thanks and be glad about God's word, which is part of our worship. We know that it's part of our daily lives to turn to God's word for inspiration, for healing, for help and forgiveness, for guidance. The psalm says God's word is a lamp to our feet 
and a light to our path, even when the sun is not shining, when we're depressed or broken or grieving, God's word gives us that hope to keep on that path. Jesus said, whoever keeps my word, they are my disciples. And in my word, Jesus said, you will find life for eternity. And again, it's a word not to keep to ourselves, but to share with others, that they too might know of the gladness that God wants and wills for all of us. And of course, you know what number one is. His name starts with J, ends with S. It's not Jonas. It's not justice. It's Jesus. God's greatest gift for us to rejoice in this Advent Christmas season. The one who came to give his life for you and me. The rock of our salvation. The one waited for for hundreds of years. And now we wait for his second coming. Ready or not, here I come, Jesus says. And we'll know it. And we'll be ready. Because we'll be in prayer. We'll be in worship. We'll be doing those things which bring life to others. Helping. Praying. Comforting. Jesus. The sunshine of our souls. The bread of life, as he says. Whoever eats this bread will never hunger again. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. And he is the healer of our every ill. The wonderful counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord, for coming to us and the promise you will come again one day. Help us be ready by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now you have to write down those top ten and uh, let me know if you remembered them. <laughs> that would be number uh, 11, memory, right? My Lord, what a morning when he comes. Please join with me in the confession of faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we rejoice today in the gift of your coming. We thank you for the gift of your love and mercy, for calling us together as your body here on earth, the church. Ask your blessing on the church here and throughout the world today, especially where there's persecution and oppression. We pray for all people affected by strife and violence, by war and conflict, and speed the day when there is war no more. And bless all the peacemakers today who stand in harm's way for the sake of peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as we prepare for the gift of the Holy Communion today, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we confess before you and one another that we have fallen short and that you love us just the way we are and forgive us. And thank you by your Holy Spirit to renew us every day. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, be with those we know to be ill and hospitalized, those facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We thank you for Carl Dietrich returning home. Continue to pray for him, for Bill Burnap, Donna Lindbaum. Be with Sandy Kirshner and Vicki Anderson, Karen Thiesfeld's parents, Ray and Charlotte Canfield, and others we name before you today for healing, strength, and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. We remember before you today, O oh Lord, all of our departed family and friends, especially those dear to us who we name before you in our hearts. Keep us in union with them here through faith toward you, that in the hereafter we'll be rejoined with them to look upon your face in glory everlasting. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offerings. Thanks for the ushers for helping with that.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took the bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And when you pray, pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're all invited to the Holy Communion today. We'll be doing continuously You'll be ushered up in two lines, receive the elements of the communion. You could put your empty cups in the baskets. There's gluten-free wafers in the bread tray. There's wine or grape juice in the center of the wine tray. Please be seated. Uh, we'll be singing Beautiful Savior during the communion.
Let us pray. We thank you, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to forgive us and heal us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace, and at last bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. Thanks to Mary Knutson and crew for uh, decorating the church for this Advent Christmas season. Always a joy to have the, uh, the uh, sights and sounds and the, the beautiful scenery as we uh, celebrate the gift of God's love in Jesus Christ. We're all invited for coffee and treats downstairs, adult Bible study in the office wing following uh, the worship. I have a request. There's a, there's a woman in our neighborhood needing to move to Meadowbrook. Uh, she needs a pickup and a ramp. So if any of you have that access, let me know so we can help her move into her new home. Uh, thanks to uh, Daryl and Jan Bauman for live streaming. And Jan, I guess you have a birthday tomorrow. So we'll sing to Jan. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jane. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. Wednesday night, starting this coming Wednesday at 6.30, we'll have Advent evening worship. We'll be doing the Holden evening prayer. So spread the word. Come and join us as an Advent discipline to worship together. Any other announcements? Rachel, thanks for playing. Uh, we have a song, uh, Sandy. Pastor, you want to hear a dirty joke? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think Not you'd say <laughs> Ollie's pig fell in the mud yesterday. <laughs> That's dirty. <laughs> this is going all around the world now. Okay. <laughs> quite ready for primetime singers. <laughs> Come on, kids. No, you were good. You were good. Come on, kids, up on the stage. Give us a minute. Give us a together now.
Let's hear it for the praise man. Go in peace, let it shine.